Hello Year 5 and 6. And this is Chapter 8, A New Project. Edinburgh, January 1883. The carriage pulled up outside a row of townhouses, wheels skidding on the snow-packed street. Steam rose from two slick black horses as the coachman leapt from his seat and opened the ca carriage door. A pair of passengers stepped down onto the frozen ground. First was Vindictus Sharp. His striking blue eyes and neat silver hair and goatee flashed in the light of the snow-white city as he glanced around the familiar skyline, running up the slope of the old town to Edinburgh Castle. Close on Sharp's heels was a young man, perhaps 15 years of age. He was short and slight, dressed in a dusty grey pinstripe suit, messy waves of hair falling over a face halfway to becoming handsome. Vindictus Sharp paid the coachman without tipping him and led his young companion up a slippery stone staircase. He rapped three times on the townhouse door with the silver handle of his cane. The door opened almost immediately. How may I help you? said the butler of the house. We are here to see Miss Birdie Sandford, said Sharp. She is not expecting us, but I am sure she will not turn down the opportunity to catch up with an old friend. The butler looked at the pair for a moment. Who should I say is calling? Vindictus Sharp. She will recognise the name. We shared the stage together for a while. The butler nodded. Very well, please wait here. The door closed, a light flurry of snow began to fall. Man and boy stood in silence. A few minutes later, the door was opened by a tiny old woman with a beehive of silver hair. Her eyes, magnified by thick lenses, looked sharp up and down. Vindictus Sharp! What has it been? Twenty years! My God, you haven't aged a day! Sharp bowed his head. And neither of you, Birdie. I thought you were a better liar than that, she said with a dismissive wave. Come in and out of the snow. They followed her into the house, which was spacious and grand, and smelled of flowery perfume. She led them to a large sitting room on the second floor, where the butler was waiting. He poured a brandy for Birdie, a whiskey for Sharp, a cup of hot chocolate for the young man, and then left the room closing the doors. Birdie sipped from her glass, sucking air through her teeth as liquor burned her throat. I will spare you the usual pleasantries, she said. I know you find them as tiresome as I do. We will come straight to the point. I assume you have resurfaced after these many years because you have a business proposition. Sharp leaned forward in his chair. He sipped from his glass. I do indeed. Do you recall why I decided to take a break from performing in our magic shows? Birdie sipped her brandy. Of course, she said. You wish to dabble in teaching, which I found strange considering your dislike for children. Is your daughter still locked away in that school? Sharp waved the question away. I am not merely dabbling. Twenty years ago in Frankfurt, a hag visited my dressing room. She told me that one day I would find a pupil and that together we would push magic to places it has never been. Birdie indicated the young man with her mahogany walking stick. Is the boy good? Sharp laughed. Good? He has the potential to be great, almost as great as me. I believe we could sell out theatres across the world. That is why I've come. If I'm training the boy to change the world, then the least we can expect is to make a little money along the way. Don't you think? Birdie's eyes turned to the young man, who looked at his feet. Are you interested in taking to the stage, boy? Yes, ma'am. Mr Sharp had been preparing me. Would you care to show me? The boy glanced at Sharp, who had instructed him that he should never, under any circumstances, admit to his talents in public. He had no wish to upset his teacher. A great many beatings had taught him his place and knocked impeccable manners into him. It's acceptable in these circumstances, Sharp said. Birdie is aware of our abilities. She has considerable connections in the world of entertainment and she has made a great deal of money, thanks to me. 
And you, thanks to me, said Birdie with a prim smile. Show me what you can do, boy. The young magician breathed deeply. He concentrated on the tendrils of stream rising from the cup of tea in his hands. Immediately, the steam began to flow faster, gathering together in smooth curls near the boy's feet and pushing upward, forming at first the sketchy outline of a man. The steam refined, rough edges smoothing to become a work of art, until a replica of Birdie's butler stood in the centre of the room. The steam butler walked silently towards Birdie, bowing before her, planting a kiss on her hand. Then the figure spun in a circle, coattails flying, and vanished, leaving, leaving only a misty silhouette fading slowly to nothing. Birdie stared at the air where the steam had been, her mouth open. At last she turned to Vindictus Sharp, a wide smile breaking across her face. What do you have in mind? she asked.